HbA1c is a blood test that shows how well you are controlling your blood sugar over time. It does this by taking a look at how much sugar is attached to your red blood cells. The more sugar that is attached, the higher your HbA1c. In this video, we'll take a look at how this test works and ways to keep your results in the healthy range. HbA1c goes by different names, so you might hear it referred to as simply the A1c test, the hemoglobin A1c test, or the glycated hemoglobin test. And while this last name is the most complex, it does the best job of explaining what the test measures, which is the amount of sugar or glucose that is sticking to a specific protein in your red blood cells called hemoglobin. The process of glucose binding to hemoglobin is called glycation, hence the name the glycated hemoglobin test. Your red blood cells are great targets for this test because of their unique structure and how they use glucose to survive. Red blood cells are plentiful in your bloodstream and their primary job is to carry oxygen around your body and they take their job very seriously. So we see that as red blood cells mature, they fill up with more and more hemoglobin, which is the protein that actually carries the oxygen. But this accumulation of hemoglobin makes things very cramped inside the cells. So to make room, mature red blood cells sacrifice their mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouses that the majority of your cells rely on to make energy. Without these powerhouses, your red blood cells must get their energy through a much less efficient process that involves the fermentation of glucose. And while this process works, it wears the cells out quickly. So the average lifespan of a red blood cell is relatively short and typically only a few months in length. During that short life, your red blood cells provide a record of how much glucose they encounter, which acts as a good indicator of how well you've been controlling your blood sugar over time. And this ability to reveal a picture of your average blood sugar over a few months is what makes the HbA1c test useful as a screening test for prediabetes and diabetes. Now, having red blood cells that are essentially sugar-coated may sound a bit alarming, but it's normal to have some glycation present. So your HbA1c would never be zero. According to the National Institute for Health, a person without diabetes would have an A1c level below 5.7%, whereas a person with diabetes would have an A1c of 6.5 or above. And in between these two figures, a person would be classified as having prediabetes. So you can see that keeping your HbA1c low is a desirable goal. And fortunately, there are a number of actions that you can take to naturally lower your results. The best approach is to reduce the amount of quick digesting carbohydrates that you're eating. When you eat carbohydrates, your digestive tract breaks them down into glucose, which is then transported into your blood where the simple sugar comes in contact with your red blood cells. So you want to eat in a way that minimizes the rush of sugar into your blood. And that is done by reducing carbs that break down quickly like sugar and refined carbs, which I refer to as the three C's, cookies, cakes, and candies. Some carbohydrates like leafy greens, non-starchy vegetables, nuts and seeds contain fiber and nutrients that slow their breakdown and absorption. So you don't need to eliminate all carbs from your diet, just make different choices. Exercise is also beneficial because it helps your body use the sugar that is available by improving insulin sensitivity. When your cells are more insulin sensitive, they have an easier time pulling sugar out of your blood so there is less circulating. And the exercise does not have to be exhausting to be helpful. Even short, brisk walks after dinner can move you into a positive direction. These lifestyle changes, when done consistently, can result in weight loss, which is another way you can bring down your HbA1c naturally. In fact, the effects of weight loss can be dramatic. This study followed 522 middle-aged overweight men and women for more than three years. During the study, the subjects were split into an intervention group that was given help losing weight and a control group. Due to the lifestyle changes that resulted in weight loss, the risk of diabetes was reduced by 58% in the intervention group. 
So lifestyle choices will make a difference in your HbA1c level, which is good news because that means you have some control. However, the changes will take time, which requires you to create a plan that is easy to follow, enjoyable, and effective. Those are my three E's and they are the overarching goal of my Freedom Health program. So if you're looking for a guide to get you to your goal, I invite you to check out my program through the links provided. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button so that you will be notified the next time I have a video coming out. Till then, have a great week. Thanks.